Hey, what's up, everybody? This is going to be the top 10 promos of all time. This is a list that came up with my, uh, me and my brother, we came up with it. And uh, we, we tried to do the best we could. Uh, so let me let me know what you guys uh, think we might have left out. And uh, let me, and maybe you could give your opinions on this list. So I'm just going to go through some of the honorable mentions that we cut from the top 10. Uh, the Rocks Get the Fuck Out promo on uh, Steve Austin when Steve Austin walked out. I thought that was definitely one of the, one of the better Rock promos uh, none of the Shawn Michaels promos made the list. You know, the, the Montreal promo on Hogan and Brett was close. The Lost My Smiles uh, thing really had a big effect on the business, so that was close. His WrestleMania 11 press conference was close. But at the end of the day, I don't really think Shawn had any, you know, like mega blow-away promos uh, that, that would have made the list. Um, Roddy Piper's Piper's Pit with Jimmy Snuka, that, that was uh, definitely considered... A lot of CM Punk's promos, the um, the Sign of Dishonor promo, the Straight Edge promo on Raven, um, the um, Rey Mysterio birthday promo was definitely close. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, you know, those Ring of Honor promos were, were pretty much classic. Uh, Joey Styles, the Joey Styles shoot promo on Raw, I thought that was pretty awesome. Definitely uh, was in consideration. Rob Van Dam's ECW One Night Stand promo was was really from the heart it's just the execution of it was kind of off but uh yeah that was good um rick flair's promo on carlito you know that's a promo that uh billy donovan from the uh, florida gators actually played for his team before to motivate his team so that that was definitely considered eddie kingston's promo from chikara from this year was classic that was close uh hulk hogan's wcw heel promo was definitely considered jericho's promo on the rock before royal rumble when he said he should be taken seriously, that was definitely considered. Um, we had Eddie Guerrero's promo on Rock on uh, Brock Lesnar before No Way Out 2004. Uh, Michael Cole and Daniel Bryan on NXT. You know some of Dusty Rose promos. Uh, Jim Cornette's promos from 1997. Uh, Bobby Heenan stuff was all considered as well. So yeah, so this is going to be the top ten promos. We start off with number ten. Uh, Steve Austin's ECW promo uh, right after he got fired by Eric Bischoff in uh, August of 1995. Uh, what were your thoughts on, on that one? Well, that was just an amazing promo because, it, you know, basically, even looking back on it now, you see this guy, you know, a few years before he became the biggest thing in professional wrestling, and he's sitting there looking at the camera saying, I'm the best wrestler in the world. You know, I can be the best thing in professional wrestling. And then over the next few years, he went out there and he proved it. And it's that's it's the type of promo that just gets better and better with, with age. Because you look back on it, uh, especially as you look at promos, a lot of things that go on in pro wrestling now and in WWE now. And, you know, it still is kind of, you know, to the script. And here Steve Austin is and a lot of other guys in ECW at the time getting on there, talking about their true feelings, how they really feel and what they really want to do in the business to make a splash, to make an impact. And Steve Austin did just that. Um, yeah, the Austin promo was great. You know, I really I really think, you know, the, you know, just getting screwed and, and working his ass off for so many years and just not, you know, being a happy person, really, you know, paying your dues, is, that's what it was all about. You, you can't really cut a promo like that unless you've really been hit hard by life. And I, I feel like Austin really was, you know, feeling like he was really unappreciated and um, it just brought the best out of him it's just you could just see you could just see it in his eyes the emotion and the the fire every, everything was there and uh, you know Paul Heyman got it out of him after the promo was over everyone was like that was fucking awesome so that was pretty much the start of uh, you know the, the 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 different Steve Austin character and uh, it set the world on fire really set the tone for uh, you know what would come in the coming years all right at number nine we're gonna go with JBL's promo this is right Right before the uh, Great American Bash, he uh, he was fired by CNBC. Uh, with the WWE went out to Germany, and to get heat, Bradshaw actually did the Hail Hitler uh, salute. Then after that, he was uh, actually fired by uh, CNBC. So there was a lot of controversy at the time, and uh, you know Bradshaw really went off on the uh, you know the fans and how they they settle for these mediocre jobs, while he's someone that worked his ass off and really you know he had the, he had a backup plan. And really, I don't know, it was just one of those promos where, you know, you just really let it all out. And uh, just, just, I mean, what, do you remember anything about this? J all I, all I remember is JBL winning the WWE title with the promo. I remember when I saw that promo on SmackDown before the Great American Bash, I remember just saying to myself, holy crap, 
he just won the WWE title with the promo. And it actually bothered me a little bit because I was really, I was so happy that Eddie Guerrero was champion at the time. I was a huge fan of Eddie Guerrero. I didn't want to see Bradshaw, JBL, uh, Skywood can walk around with the cowbell for the past, you know, five years, um, become champion. But after he cut that promo, I was like, ah, oh, man, you got to give it up. You right. got to give it to him. He went out there and he proved his worth. For as crappy as he was in the ring, I mean, some of the stuff he did on the mic that year was just unbelievable. I mean, someone that could create that much heat and it could be that convincing on the mic, you just you just can't ignore it. So uh, and it, it, it even made Eddie Guerrero's title reign seem like, you know, it's, you, we just can't, we can't do it. We got to give this guy the belt. So, you know, I, in, in a way, I, the Bradshaw title reign, it's not, it really kind of hurt my love for the uh, WWE at the time, but still, uh, you can't deny it. I mean, it, the guy was just amazing on the mic. Uh, next up, at number eight, uh, John Cena on Brock Lesnar. Um, the whole Cena Brock thing really, you know, propelled Cena to that next level. I was shocked at the uh, material that Cena came up with, and uh, it was just so cutting edge, and it was very, kind of Steve Austin-esque, you know, really um, just amazing stuff. I mean, what were your thoughts on the Cena Rock, uh, Brock uh, promo? It had some elements of Steve Austin because of the seriousness of it um, and because of, you know, sort of he was proving his worth as a, as a promo guy. But it also had some elements of the, of the Rock because it was funny. But it, 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 it Cena's rap promos um, had this weird twisting thing in your mind where on one hand it was funny because he was rapping. You know, that's funny. And, and, and But two, he would always find a point in the promo in the middle or toward the end where it would get ultra serious. And he'd be saying, you know, you're, you know I'm, I'm going to come up, I'm going to rise up, and I'm going to take, take advantage. And at the end of the one promo, he, he goes, you know, we're inmates, Brock. You just dropped the soap. You know, and that's hilarious. But at the same time, you know, it's like, holy shit. He's, you know, he's going to take control. He's yeah, I, as, I, as messed up as that sounds. I, I thought Cena and Brock just had a lot of chemistry with, without Brock really saying anything. It's just some of the insults that Cena would throw to Brock. You could just tell Brock was kind of annoyed by it because it, it felt really real, actually. Uh, it's the same Brock left because I think the Cena-Brock feud definitely would have been superior to a few like Cena and Orton. Uh, I think those would have been the two guys carrying the company. So, uh, yeah, just, just great stuff by Cena. That Definitely. Uh, you know, so some of Cena's promos on Taker, the, the, the promo in the graveyard is another great Cena promo. Uh, if you want to see some great promos, definitely check out Cena from 2003. He was, he was on fire. All right, number seven, we're going to go with uh, Mick Foley, the ECW. Um, the, the one when he talked about professional wrestling will never be respected was a great one. But uh, we went with the, uh, the Kane Dewey promo, the uh, anti-hardcore promo on uh, Tommy Dreamer. Uh, what were your thoughts on Foley's promos from EC, ECW? Foley's promos were the ones that almost, would almost make me cry. And when it, it's in, in that promo, you know, you could tell, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty pissed off, you know, and he's, he's pretty run down. But when he mentions Kane Dewey, at first I was like, what the heck is he talking about? What does that mean? And then once you, when you realize, oh, man, he's, he's saying that that sign that the, the fan had, it said Kane Dewey, the fan was actually talking about his son, you know, Dewey Foley. And it's like, oh my God! That's, yeah. And then, and then he looks into the camera and he, he calls the fans, you know, selfish. You know, they wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. And you know, it just sort of brought to light, you know, you know sort of this anger toward the fans who are screaming, you know, EC Dub, EC Dub. He's hardcore. He's hardcore. You know, what does that all mean? You know, do you do you really appreciate, you know, what I'm putting my body, my heart, my soul through? For you, and it, it, it makes you want to. It made me want to cry. Yeah, just just great stuff by Foley and uh, ECW. Um, 